For the longest time on this channel, I have been the only one contributing to any of the videos that you see. I have edited, recorded, planned every single video for however many years I've been doing this, four and a half, five almost. Um, that changes uh, pretty much this month. Uh, I have now three buddies that I've brought on that are now going to be helping with editing on the review channel and then on this channel. Um, and that requires, of course, some hardware to do it. So today, we're going to be taking a look at the new NAS system that was actually sponsored to me by Synology and Seagate. Um, this is something that is quite essential for, I guess, any uh, video production operation, uh, YouTubers especially. Uh, you need the ability to have a central server that acts as a storage device that you can edit off of. Um, and so today, we're going to be checking out that uh, telling you a little bit about the background of stuff that's going on around here and um, yeah I'm really excited and um, I've got some good people that are going to be helping out. Um, you might see them in videos um, where they might just be helping editing. Starting out I need to kind of give you a little bit of background about some of the important parts of video editing. Yes you need fancy desktops that people can edit off of. Yes you need you know decent bandwidth, you need a wonderful network, uh, you need to have all these very nice and expensive things uh, that I can be very grateful that Seagate and uh, Synology have both sponsored. Um, it means that I can I'll basically allow for other people to edit while we all work on the same projects, um, we all can work on the same timelines, um, and especially when there's you know collective group projects or something very important that multiple people are working on, that now is all possible. Whereas beforehand, storing stuff on a local drive on your computer is nice, but it makes it rather difficult to you know share files across everyone, you know across all the yes the editors. With that being said, uh, let's talk a little bit about the new stuff that I have um, at least for the editors. So I ended up purchasing two old um, Dell machines, Dell workstations, and they're not really old. They're about two or three years old, in fact. Um, at a major discount um, from, I guess, we'll just say a yard sale. It was definitely a snag. And these are the machines now that my editors are using. I think they have 64 gigs of RAM and uh, Fire Pro W7100s. Um, workstation cards are not my first pick, but um, given that they're like $600 on eBay right now, uh, and I paid 400 for the whole system. I think, uh, well, I think I think that's a, a, a in anyone's book a pretty good snag. Um, this stuff is rather expensive. I know it may not seem like it, but I don't like spending money. Yeah, this this whole month has been a rather interesting experience because it's taking the channel uh, to a much much farther level than uh, I ever had imagined. We have three computers, my desktop, and then those two extra workstations. Um, and I have three guys that I'm kind of training to edit. These guys aren't going to be editing full-time. This is more of a part-time thing, and that's why I've got three of my good friends um, kind of helping out so that they can kind of take turns, and it's, you know, more of a laid-back thing um, rather than, you know, being full-time. Obviously, I don't have <laughs> enough content that I put out to be full-time. That might be changing shortly, though. Four guys total that are trying to edit content in a timely manner, uh, work together. I need to kind of view content uh, access content from different machines, um, and that means that a NAS is practically a really good option. So a couple things that's kind of important about video editing is that it requires a massive amount of, uh, I guess, bandwidth, because you need to be able to read and write to drives, especially when you're editing 4K content, which this channel has been doing almost for three years now. Um, editing 4K content is very bandwidth heavy. It requires high speed drives and high bandwidth. Uh, we're talking 10 gigabit cards, uh, pretty much installed on everything on here so that that way multiple people can be working on the same server at the same time and not have any bottlenecks. That's very important. So Seagate has sponsored four of these Iron Wolf Pro 125 drives and these are two terabytes or 1.92 terabytes. Basically these drives have a huge amount of data that you can read and write to them. For example, just, just out of a you know quick comment here, I've burned through multiple one terabyte SSDs like WD Blues because of the fact that I have um, used them as my, you know, SSD for my camera, and I have burned through them because I've written to them so many times on, you know, the history of this channel, that I have literally caused, you know, permanent damage to the drives, and they're unusable. They stop recording. Um, so I set out, and I went through, and we got a whole bunch of these, um, and Seagate sponsored four of them, which I greatly appreciate. 
Next up is the NAS itself. And to talk a little bit lightly about what kind of storage system I had to set up, I had a couple interesting uh, situations that required uh, a very unique solution. First off, um, I am a very unique person on the YouTube I guess, scene in the sense that I run Minecraft servers um, from home. Uh, I have all of that done in my house. And so that means that I need to have a safe place to store large amounts of world backups and file data uh, in a safe place that these machines can access, you know, obviously pull stuff from and save the backups too. Um, as much as you guys like to make comments about the fact that I have computers and I've sold all my organs, um, which I may or may not have, uh, these are Minecraft servers and they actually do stuff. Um, I don't just sit them. I mean, they look nice. I mean, if you're going to have it stuff doing something, make it look nice. It's in your room. Um, but no, these are all servers that I think almost a hundred people are playing on right now. But that being said, these, that stuff needs to be saved. Not only do we have editors trying to edit off the same machine, we also need to save those world files and all that information on the same machine. Additionally, I have to store long-term video backups of every video that I upload, which is not something I've been doing properly. That means that I need also another separate kind of storage system that allows me to store long-term files of raw footage and also the final footage and the final cuts of the videos that I put out. In total, there's three kind of separate drives that I really need. And so what Synology has given me, which I should probably check, is a Synology DS1621XS+, Plus, which all of those words basically translates to a storage server that has six total drive slots and two SSD or M.2 cache drives, as well as the ability to upgrade up to 32 gigs of RAM. What does that mean? Well, you've got six slots to fill with whatever you'd like. I ended up filling all six of those with these Seagate Iron Wolf drives, which means that I have a usable editing server size. I have a usable server size of about 5.2 terabytes. That means that all three of us, or all four of us, whoever's editing at the time, um, have access to a collective storage, uh, I guess, drive that we all can work on and edit off of at the same time. It's pretty fast. I get about a gig and a half worth of speed in and off of it right when I'm um, just editing off of it. And then I have multiple people working on it at the same time, and we haven't had any bottlenecks so far, which means that this is a very valid solution and actually works really nicely for what we're doing here. Meanwhile, the question remains though about the Minecraft servers and these long-term backups, because let's be honest, 5.2 terabytes is not a lot of space when it comes to storing Minecraft files that you've had around for eight years. Some of these files, almost about a half a terabyte to three fourths of a terabyte for just a single Minecraft world. Now, I know that seems kind of crazy because a lot of people talk about like 2B2T and stuff, but I've had a Minecraft world running continuously on the same world for almost, well, eight years now. And um, actually it's almost nine. And that means that the world file has gotten quite large. So backups are also quite large. So in order to accommodate this, I've also purchased, used by the way, cause I'm a cheap boy, um, purchased two additional expansion drives. One that's a little bit slower than the other, which was also cheaper, um, just because you don't really need high speed when you're storing large amounts of files, especially world backups. Not to mention, I also purchased a bunch of drives, somewhat used. Um, obviously, when they're used, I think I purchased in total, there are about 20 terabyte usable storage on each of them, um, and RAID, I believe, five or 10. Um, so I end up with about 40 terabytes of large um, long term storage. Now, all this in total probably cost me less around a grand, maybe a grand and a half. Um, I don't like talking about finances on the channel, um, but I feel like with, obviously with the sponsorship I paid, ended up paying a grand and a half. Um, I have no idea what this all is worth. I don't like talking about finances and stuff on the channel, um, but I also think that being open about what's going on, especially in the background, um, where the ad revenue from which you guys spend, you know, your time, your, you, the ads that you watch, if you watch, if you're an ad blocker, dude, I am too. So I can't really judge. Um, but I would like to at least include you in on that. And that is where the ad revenue is going. So now I want to take a look and show you guys kind of showcase what the process is like now, what this actually is capable of, what the drives are capable of that Seagate sponsored and uh, show you a little bit about kind of what goes on in the editing process. Beforehand, I was editing just by myself, obviously, 
And that was off of the singular raw drive. Um, this was a, it's a RAID 0, which means that um, if something happens, I'm up a creek, something happens to this drive, which luckily never, nothing ever did. Uh, I think it's four WD black drives, so I get speeds about 3,000 uh, gigabytes per second. Um, which is more than enough from what I need. I basically, long story short, previously in 2018, I used just a simple four terabyte long term storage drive. Uh, and then recently I uh, got one of these Drobos, which is like an, it's like a phone from 2012 or something. It's an eight bay one, but um, it doesn't really actually truly have, um, I think it only has like, sorry, it only has like probably like eight or nine terabytes and it's rather close to actually being filled up. Um, so that leaves us the new drives that we have here. Um, you have a long-term storage, which you kind of actually have the final stuff here. Uh, and then you have the Minecraft backups. So you have pretty much everything in there. Um, and these are just server backups um, from that previously. So as you can see, it's not actually filled up surprisingly. Actually, we've gone through the editing drive uh, already halfway full, and um, we've just been doing this for like less than like a week. Um, so, obviously the editing drive is uh, a different story, but for the most part, um, making good use of um, that drive right there so far. So the long-term storage is for final videos and things like that. And so 20, 21 terabytes each, both of usable storage, and then the 5.0. Additionally, I have 4 terabytes worth of cache that is collectively spread out about here. And also, um, I've upgraded the RAM on here since multiple people are using this. So let's show you kind of what it looks like when we edit it from Premiere. So here we are. This is a um, like review, and this is going on the review channel. In case you didn't know, we actually started up a separate review channel, so that way um, we can focus on giving you guys more content. I know you haven't seen it recently, um, but uh, or seen any change in content recently. I've been spending a lot of time making sure these guys uh, know the ins and outs, in ins and outs before we. Um, start posting content like crazy, but there's a lot in the works, and actually there's a pretty substantial long list of ideas. Also, heads up, this weekend, yeah, this weekend, um, I should also be posting the um, uh, the long-awaited virus video part three or whatever, letting people install viruses, and we're taking it up to Office Depot, and there's a lot of a lot of goods, a lot of goodies, so um, be looking forward to that. Um, but for the most part, this is what you're looking at. Actually, let me get Task Manager up real quick. So you see going through here, you, you know, you're seeing anywhere from like 700 something megs, right? When you, you know, move around and stuff, you're seeing some large increases. And when you have a bunch of people working on it, well, three people as at the max at the moment, um, you're going to have roughly, what is that? 600 times three, um, 18 or 1.8 gigs worth of, you know, just reads from this drive, which that's what, you know, having SSDs does. However, my only complaint um, in this entire situation, this entire setup, is that when you have three people or people are, you know, three people are working off the drive and then you're also writing, like, you know, footage that you've just recorded to the drive, um, sometimes the drive, uh, the fans just crank up obnoxiously loud all of a sudden, um, which I understand stuff has to stay cool, um, but having this in the same room that, you know, you record videos in and people are going to town recording, you know, I'm recording something while people are editing and then just a completely obliterates the audio on the um, the camera or on the video that I was recording is is one minor downside I guess I would say. So overall in conclusion what does that actually mean for the channel going forward? Well first off if you haven't seen the new review channel or subscribe to that uh, it helps us out at least when you subscribe um, that would be a place that you'll see all the reviews now and uh, you might see a few more on the main channel as we kind of finish up with what uh you know, some prior commitments, um, but for the most part, everything will be kind of review related will be going over there. Uh, this channel will be kind of following more in the direction it's been heading in a long time. Um, and that is to kind of continue on with more of the crazy, creative, weird things that uh, I come up with. I think that's the direction the channel's been heading in a long time and breaking off the review channel uh, to separately handle those kind of content, you know, checking out cool stuff as well. I think that's definitely uh, something also that needed to happen. So. Uh, going forward with a lot of the new equipment that we have, um, a lot of, you know, really smart people, um, I'm really looking forward to seeing where things go in the future. Um, thank you for both Seagate and Synology for both sending out some really nice hardware um, that we will be probably be using for the foreseeable future. Um, and uh, thank you all for, I guess, supporting the channel um, as we kind of continue to grow. And um, I take this farther than I guess I ever thought it would. Um, 
I really did think this was the next step, though. Um, it needed to happen. I don't have enough time in my day to uh, put out the, num the amount of content that I would like, and this is definitely the step in that direction. Really good people helping, uh, and I'm really excited to um, see at least what you guys think going forward. So uh, thank you to both Seagate and Synology. Thank you for the wonderful systems, and thank you guys very much for um, leading us in this next step, I guess, on the channel's journey.